Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let's pray a little. Let's just pray a little bit. And just tune ourselves in. Just tune in to Heaven 101. <clears throat> Lord, write your word on our hearts today. Help us to really, really, really receive what you have for us and not zone out and think about our troubles and our problems and our work and our lives and our kids. Help us to really dig deep and write your word on, on the template of our hearts. Mm. To really just receive what you have for us today and give all our time and energy and focus right now to you. And just help us to quiet our minds and to really be mindful so that we can listen to what you have to say. If you want to speak directly to our spirits, then do it, Lord. We're listening today. You have our focus. You have our hearts. So if you want to say something to us, Lord, we're listening today. We are committed to hearing what you have for us. Whether it's through the words in your book, whether it's through the words from your vessel, from the pastor, whether it's you just want to have that still, small voice, Lord. We're getting quiet. We're ready to receive what you have. We're ready to listen, Lord. So help us to quiet our minds if we can't do it ourselves, but help us, Lord. We want to hear what you have. We know it's more important than what we have in our mind. So we want to hear it. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Thank you, Son. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, we thank you this morning for your love. Help us to search our hearts to see if we're where we want, you want us to be or where we need to be or where we need to be in life. Thank you for blessing us, Father. Thank you for this wonderful day. Father, I lift Brother Jack up this morning. I'll bind that cancer. I command it to loose him and set him free. And we loose the healing power of Jesus upon him. That he'll be healed and restored by the morning. Thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in his life. And Father God, we thank you for blessing each and every person that walked in this door this morning, Father. Reach out and touch them right where they need it the most, Father God. Pour your blessings out in their life. Heal those broken hearts. Restore peace and comfort to them. Touch them where they need it the most, Father God. Turn those things around that are not going in the right direction. Turn them around. Father, touch that heart. Cause a desire to be in there. Touch the heart. Bless them. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for blessing them, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. If you'll open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians, if you have one, or it'll probably be behind me on the screen. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and we're going to look, we're going to start in verse um, 7. We're going to look at a couple verses. And I'm going to give you a different... <laughs> I'm going to give you a different way to look at some of, of this. Um, as we talk about the interpretation, the gift of interpretation of tongues. But I'm going to take the gift of the interpretation of tongues just a little further. I'm going to take it a little deeper than just tongues. Speaking in unknown tongues and interpreting the tongues. I'm going to, I'm going to take it to this. Uh, to interpreting your life. To interpreting what the Spirit is saying to you when someone is preaching. To interpret where you're going. To interpret. Uh, not just tongues. And I'm, we will talk about the interpretation of tongues. <clears throat> the interpretation of tongues is a little bit different to teach. Now, I can teach on it uh, because I've been experiencing it for some 30 some odd years. <clears throat> but, uh, I, you just can't teach some things as a fact uh, because it's not clearly uh, you know, explained in Scripture. So I'm just going to do my best to, to teach you from what I have experienced and what I have seen. And, uh, uh, and then we'll give you some Scripture as well. But basically, the gift of interpretation is really just flowing with the Spirit. In fact, all of the nine gifts of the Spirit are just cooperating with the Holy Spirit. 
Uh, it, it, it's, it's this. It's, it's, it's hearing what the Spirit is saying, feeling what the Spirit is saying, and, and then just flowing with it. Amen. And it's really the gifts of the Spirit are that simple. They're just that simple. And uh, we make them hard. And I'm wondering if you guys are on the... Are you on the right thing? I can't walk in front of that speaker over there. Do I? Simple. I can't really turn you down a whole lot more, so you need to try to maybe... Try. I'll, I'll, I'll stay away from that. Yeah. Uh, uh, but all of, the, all of the things that... All the nine gifts of the Spirit that we're talking about, the tongues, speaking in tongues, that's just flowing with the Spirit. It's flowing in, it's flowing out. It's flowing up, it's flowing down. It's flowing through. You know... Give God your tongue. You know, give God your, you know, your. Like when we move in the gifts of healing, we we lay hands on people. We anoint them with oil. Uh, we maybe just speak a word to them, whatever it is, and uh, we touch them, and God does the work. But we're just a conduit. We're just a we're just a conduit for Him to flow through us. Jesus, let your let your hands be in my hands. Let your anointing be in my anointing. You know, flow through me. And, and that's how healings work. You know, I had, a, I, I don't know if I told you last week or sometime, I, but you know, I had a, I had a lady uh, that I met at the, uh, at the uh, Alliance uh, City. And I had prayed for her at Berghoff's restaurant. Did I should tell you that before? And uh, she had... Uh, her blood levels had been out of whack for years. I think she had a cancer treatment and so forth. And so uh, we were down at the Berghoff's restaurant here in Scott City. And, and I said, now, would you mind, uh, she was telling me all about this, her blood work and all this. And I said, well, would you mind if I just anointed you with oil and prayed for you? And so we anointed her with oil right there at Berghoff's. I mean, she's not the first one I prayed for right there the restaurant <laughs> and you know uh, she, she caught me off down at the assembly of God she said oh guess what guess what I said what Martha what happened she said well I went back to the doctor this week and you're not going to believe all my blood levels are normal and it hadn't been for years and this all happened in a month. Hallelujah. Well, Ken Strong is nothing special. God wants to flow through you like that. Amen. You know He does. Amen. He wants to flow that healing gift right out of your hands. <laughs> or the, or here, touch the hem of my garment here, whatever. Whatever. He can do it any way He wants to. Amen. That Jesus is in me. And if He's in you, then uh, these gifts <coughs> want to flow. Uh, they want to flow out. We've got to hold them back to keep them from flowing sometimes. They want to, they want to come out of us. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. So I'm going to encourage you to let them flow. Let it go. Let it flow. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7 says, uh, this is interesting, I like this. It says, um, So that ye come behind in no gift. Say no. no. He didn't want us to come behind in any gift. Now, there, there are people that teach today, tongues is done away with, interpretation is done away with, all these things are done away with because, you know, we have the printed Bible. We don't need it. Really? Because you have the printed Bible, you don't need the Holy Spirit? Are you kidding me? What are you? Duh. I mean, it just doesn't even make, it's not even logical to me. Much less true. You know, it's not accurate. But, but this, this is so that you come behind in no gift awaiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Excuse me, but is Jesus here yet? Did He come back yet? Did He come the second coming and take us and all that? No. 
He hasn't come. So that means that these gifts are still for us all the way up until His coming. So you expect every single one of them in your life, sometime in your life. And maybe regularly in your life. I love my prayer tongues. That's regular. I pray my prayer tongues every day. And I just love that. But now here in the service, we don't, you know, I don't speak in tongues out and prophesy and interpret and all that every Sunday. You know, I'm not supposed to do it every week. We're all supposed to be doing the taking turns doing those kind of things. Amen. You know? But those gifts are inside of us in Him. And it's just awesome. And so this is such a confirmation here where it says that He wants us uh, to come behind in no gift. And it says, Who shall also confirm you to the end that you might be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus. God is faithful by who you were called into the fellowship of His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're called into that fellowship. And in that fellowship, that when, it, when it says called into the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you circle that word fellowship in your Bible, it is the Greek word koinonia, K-O-I-N-O-I. Koinonia. K-O-I-N... Well, anyway, it's koinonia. I, I, I forgot the spelling. Uh, but that means... Let me tell you what that means. That means you give... And you receive. It means you're partners. So that's why when we come together, you know, we have the pricing gets up here because they're good at music. They've got special gifts for music, so they get up and they do music. And uh, I'm, I have a pastor gift. I can't help it. I just have it. And, 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 and the teaching gift. And, and so I get up here and I do my thing. But you're welcome out there to flow in these other gifts any, any time the Spirit leads you. We're not going to hold you back. People are, have you noticed, I love this at our altar. People will come up at our altar and you never know. So, so somebody will come up and anoint you with oil. They'll come from the back or they'll come from wherever. And I don't, sometimes I'll say, hey, go pray for so-and-so. But a lot of times it just happens. That's, what is that? That's partnership. Go team. Amen. Hallelujah. We're working as a team. We're working as a unit. We're, you know, the Bible says um, in, uh, in the Corinthians, it says that every joint supplies. Every joint supplies. You know, a, a clock has all these gears, you know. Have you seen a clock and they have all these, or that, the new ones don't probably, but the old ones did. They have all these gears and this gear goes that way and this gear goes that way and they're all, well, you know, you, you pull out one of those gears, that clock will not work. And we're all working together. And when we're not all working together, we don't get the good result. Amen? <clears throat> so, uh, in John 14, 26, I'm going to flip back, flip back to the words of, of Jesus. As He talked about the Holy Spirit, and... Um, 1426. I love this passage. I love us all this Holy Spirit stuff. I just love the Holy Spirit. That's awesome. And uh, so 1426, he said this. <coughs> but the comforter. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Now, some translations say Holy Ghost, some translations say Holy Spirit. I know that bothers some people. It really doesn't make any difference. It's the same Greek word, Spirit, Ghost. Don't worry about it. Don't get caught up on all these semantics and so forth. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. <clears throat> uh, this, this Greek word for comforter if you circle comforter in your Bible it's the word parakletos and uh, P-A-R-A-K-L-E-T-O-S and it means summoned 
summoned, called along one side to aid or help. That's the literal meaning. The Amplified Bible brings out all six uh, meanings of this word. I love how the Amplified brings out all six meanings of the word comforter. Now this is who the Holy Ghost is. And when you know everything that He is, you're going to go, I want the Holy Spirit in my life. Amen. Yeah. Now if you're saying the Holy Spirit's in your life, but, but there's always more of the Holy Spirit than that, than, than that. Now some of you may not believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit as being a separate a second work of the Spirit. <clears throat> but it is, whether you believe it or not. Because if you look in Scripture, I'm going to give you this, and if you have a question about this, we'll look it up later. But in John chapter 20, verse 22, Jesus told His disciples, it says, And He breathed on them, this was after His resurrection, He breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Spirit, or the Holy Ghost. He breathed on them. breath, ruach. He breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? They did. They received the Holy Spirit right then and there. But now, this same Jesus that breathed on them and said, receive ye the Holy Spirit, goes, it's a present tense word, receive ye, in the Greek. Present tense, receive, right now. The Holy Ghost. The same Jesus that told them, now, uh, receive the Holy Ghost right now. And he breathed on them. Also told them, now go to Jerusalem and wait there. Because I'm going to endue you with power from on high. And the Holy Ghost is going to come on you and, and I'm going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. And then, as you read over later in Acts 2, 4, it says, and they were all in one place, in one accord, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 2 4. Well, that was the second operation of the Spirit. <clears throat> now, did they already have the Spirit? Yes. Well, then why did they need to be baptized the Holy Spirit? Because they needed to be overflowing with the Spirit. Amen. It's good to be saved. It's good to have the Holy Ghost. But you know, don't limit Him. No, 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 I don't want any more of the Holy Ghost than I have now. I've done it happy with level three. I'm just going to stay with level three or wherever level you're at. No, I don't want to be overflowing. I don't want to go over ten. Just leave me. I'm happy with three. Well, shame on you. God's wanting more gifts for you and more anointings for you and more filling for you. Did you know that the Bible says... In Ephesians it says, Be being filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making love in your heart to the Lord. Be continually being filled with the Spirit. That's an ongoing Greek word. It's an ongoing tense. Be continually being filled with the Spirit. <laughs> speaking to yourself. See, as we speak to ourselves the Word, speak to ourselves in the Spirit, then we stay full. Hallelujah. So don't limit the Holy Spirit. If you haven't received this experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, seek it. And, and, and just seek it until you get it. I mean, to be dog determined that you're going to receive. Amen. I mean, a dog won't turn loose of a bone. And we ought to be like that about the things of God. No, Mr. Devil, you're not taking my blessing. <laughs> you are not having it. I'm getting it, and I'm getting all of it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. John 16, just flip over two chapters there. Uh, 12 and 14. I like this. It says, um, I'm teaching. I'm in a teaching mode today. Is that okay? I can jump up and down screaming and holler and preach at you, but I'm teaching you today. And I think teaching sometimes helps us. That because we get our head on straight, and then we can jump up and down later. Is that all right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. 12 and 14 of John 16. I have, uh, I have yet many things to say unto you. <clears throat> now that was Jesus, and he was telling this to his disciples. I have a lot more to tell you. 
but you cannot bear it right now. That tells me a lot right there, don't it? People will come to me and, uh, Pastor, what should I do about this? I don't know. You'll have to talk to God about it. I'm not God. Amen. <laughs> well, what do you think I should do? I said, well, and I've told people this before. I said, I would tell you, but you're not really ready. <laughs> you know, sometimes you do, you're, if a person's not ready, you're almost hurting them to tell them too much. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying, team? They're not ready. They're just gonna, they're gonna uh, push aside the spirit that what God is wanting to tell them anyway. So just <clears throat> keep it closed. And when they're ready, then you can tell them. But Jesus said, I want to tell you some more stuff, but you know, you just ain't ready. Now that sounds a little insulting, <clears throat> doesn't it? You think about it. How would you like it if somebody said, well, I tell you, but you're not ready. I mean, it sounds insulting. If I ever tell you that, don't get insulted. Just go stew somewhere and let the Holy Spirit and, uh, tell you and adjust your willingness level because that's usually what's wrong. It's usually our willingness level. Lord, bless that accident or whatever's going on in the name of Jesus and your angels that situation. Thank you for taking care of it, Lord. So, uh, but you cannot bear them now. So, Jesus was getting ready to die and then be resurrected and then be ascended up into heaven and then send the Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit. He was going to send the, the Spirit, but he hadn't sent him yet. Okay, so watch what he says here. How be it when he, this is the comforter. Oh, I didn't tell you the other six things that he was a minute ago. Uh, the, the comforter uh, in the Greek parakletos. If you're writing it down, it's comforter, counselor. You ever need counseling? The Holy Spirit will give it to you if you'll open yourself up and listen to it. Uh, helper. Need help with something? He'll help you. Advocate. Somebody on your side. A lawyer. In your case, he's a good lawyer. Strengthener, he'll give you strength. When you're weak, he'll give you strength. And stand by, he's always going to stand by. Amen. Amen. He's going to stand by his child and tell the world you love him. <laughs> he will stand by you. Amen. Hallelujah. He, that's who he is. So anyway, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. So there's there's uh, five things that the spirit does here in this, this verse. Um, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Number one, he's going to guide you into all truth. Number two, this is all in this in this verse. Number two, he's going to show you the future. Number three, he's going to glorify Jesus. Number four, he's going to receive from Jesus. And then he's going to take what he received from Jesus and reveal it into us. And that is the anointing that you operate in when you're in the interpretation. That what is revealed to Jesus and the Spirit gives it unto us to give that interpretation. <clears throat> so, it's not from the head. See, this none of this operates from the head. Hallelujah. It operates from the spirit. If you're just... Sometimes the most intelligent people are not able to do this because they're so smart that they're too smart for their own good. Amen. And they can't operate from the spirit. Amen. And we need to operate from the spirit. Now, I don't mean that you don't need to be intelligent. <laughs> you need to be intelligent, too. But you need to separate your brain from your spirit and let the spirit talk to you and, and talk through you. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 4 to 6, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 4 to 6, 
Ja. 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 If I don't, it's all right, I'll still look at my phone. We can always pick it up next week. Four. Oh, no, the wrong chapter. All right, here we go. I thank God. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given to you by Jesus Christ. The word grace there, the grace of God. You see it up there? The grace of God, which is given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the word grace there is charis. Charis, where we get charismatic. It's the gift. The gifts. The, the gifts come out of grace. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. The gifts come out of grace. What does that mean? You can't earn them. That's why I really, and this is unfortunate, this is very unfortunate. But a, uh, to me it is, but maybe not to God, I don't know. But this is why the gift of healing can work through somebody who is really doing stupid things. Oh, yeah. A.A. A. Allen uh, had tremendous healings. People were healed of cancer in his knee. I mean, cancer fall off their body right there in the service. Goiters would fall off. They just, miracles would happen in A.A. Uh, Alan's means, but he was an alcoholic. He was a closet alcoholic. Well, you know what? I don't know if he dealt with it or if he didn't deal with it. But I do know this one thing, that God used him, and it was called grace. That's why this is a grace gift. These are grace gifts. Yes, you don't have to have it all together for God to use you, but you probably ought to get it together. Yes. Amen. So you can live longer. Because he didn't live very long. I mean, he didn't live long enough. His liver gave <laughs> out. You know. Hallelujah. <clears throat> grace. That's, that's how we flow in these things. What's grace mean? Undeserved. Unmerited favor. Why? They couldn't speak in tongues because they smoked cigarettes. Really? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a grace gift. Grace means they may not have it all together. Their works might not be all perfect yet. They might not be shining all pretty like. But you know what? They're shining in His eyes. Amen. They're shining in his eyes because he sees them through the blood of the Lamb. He sees them clean through the blood of the covenant. So, uh, hallelujah. Well, keep your judgment to yourself. Amen. Let God judge. Amen. Back in the old days of Pentecost, Brother Hagin tells us a story. So back in the old days of Pentecost, there was, he had a whole line of people was up front, you know, and he laid hands on them, and they all were speaking, started speaking in tongues, received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Just a whole bunch of these. And among them in this Pentecostal church was some rich lady with all these diamonds and jewels and stuff all over, and she had makeup on. Mm -hmm. Holy stinking cow. <laughs> they could not be. That pastor said, the pastor said, she can't have speaking. She can't have the Holy Ghost. He said, look at her. She's got lipstick on. She's got jewelry on. Brother Hayden said, well, I guess the Holy Ghost didn't know. Because <laughs> he baptized her anyway. <laughs> well, hallelujah, that's called the grace of God. Amen. Anything that you and I did is by the grace of God anyway. It's not because we're wonderful. Amen. It's because Jesus is wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, where am I? Verse was I in? Four. Four. That in everything, say everything. Everything. What do you think that might mean? Everything. <laughs> All things. Everything. Yeah. Now watch this. That in everything ye are enriched in him. In all utterance, how much utterance? All. And in all knowledge. All. In Him, you are enriched. How? Through grace. Through the grace gifts, through the charis. 
You know what enriched is? If they make bread and it's missing some vitamins, they put it in there. Then they add some vitamins to it and they enrich it. And you know, if you're lacking something in your life, God just puts what you're lacking in you. Amen. And He enriches us. Amen. Hallelujah. So if there's something you need, maybe you you got a mean streak, you just need the, you just need the fruit of the Spirit flowing in you. Right. And God just puts that spirit of patience in you. Amen. And that spirit of love in you and that spirit of kindness, one the three, those are three of the fruits of the Spirit. Right. He enriches you just like bread. And pretty soon you're tasting pretty good. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> full of the love of God, full of patience, full of kindness, fruit of the Spirit. And, and not only are you enriched in your life, but here it says, it says you're enriched in, in all utterance. That means your, your mouth <coughs> changes. Instead of talking mean to your kids, you talk you talk kind to your kids. You talk patience to your kids. Yeah, you might have to discipline them. But you don't have to discipline them with meanness. You discipline them. I used to just beat Daniel's butt. Not <laughs> Daniel way better. But I beat his butt, I would. I mean, you know, I didn't abuse him, but I'd spank him. I spanked him. And if Daniel said he needed it, he admitted it. And he really did because he just tried to kill his older brother. <laughs> just did it. Uh, but I'd spank him, and I spanked Andrew too. And then I'd say to them, and I said to them, now, I don't want to spank you. Before I spanked him, I said, I don't want to spank you. But I have to spank you. I have to. Because you need it. To show you that I love you, to keep you from going to jail someday, you've got to learn boundaries and consequences, so I'm going to beat your butt. And I did. And you know, they turned out pretty good. And, yeah. and some of you all have learned to spank your kids, but not in anger. Don't discipline your kids in anger. You discipline them in love. If you discipline them in love, then that's what, it, it bears the fruit of the Spirit. If you discipline them in anger, then it bears resentment. So, oops is right. And all of us have some oopses. All of us in this room have some oopses. I've had some oopses with my boys. And thank God, you know, me and Andrew had to sit down and have some talks. And he said, Dad, you're a hypocrite. I said, I know I am. Help me with it, and I'll repent of it. And he did, and I did. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> that you come behind. Well, no, we're not in that verse. What verse are we? Okay, verse. In all utterance and in all knowledge. You see, uh, <clears throat> enriched in knowledge, well, that's if you're lacking knowledge, well, then God throws, God throws that knowledge in there. Hallelujah. Just like bunny bread. Let's <laughs> throw that in there. Mix it up and bake it up. You got some good bread. Mix it up in us, Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. And then we're enriched in our mouth. Our language is enriched. I speak a word over you of encouragement that brings you to the place where you can act better. Instead of calling you an old, dirty, rotten sinner. That don't help you act in the bed, does it? No, no. Call you what God calls you. You know you're a child of God. Amen. And, I, and you're, and you're going to do better. You're going to walk in greater victory. Amen. And, and, and talk each other up instead of talking each other down. Amen. 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 So, enriched. Um, in, I'm, I'm probably, well, I'll just, he'll probably go to it, but 1 Chronicles 12 32 uh, is just. It talks about the sons of Issachar. And the sons of Issachar, the Bible says that they had an understanding of the times. Uh, which were men that had an understanding of the times. They had an anointing on them to understand the times that they were in 
and a discernment of the interpretations of God's Spirit. Now see, the Magi had, a, had some of that on them. You know the Magi that came to see Jesus? Well, they had, it, it took them probably, that, as they say, anywhere between, from seven months to maybe a year, or maybe even longer, some, but they don't know. At least, though, seven months it took for the Magi to get to Jesus, you know, the three wise men. We say three, it doesn't say how many there were. It might have been two, it might have been four. I didn't say it, but anyway. Then we know there was three gifts. We don't know how many Magi there was. But they came to Jesus, but they had to start seven months before, so they had a discernment of the time. So they had an interpretation of the Spirit on them from the prophetic words of the Old Covenant from the scrolls of the Old Covenant and from the stars and they watched and God revealed to them to go look for Jesus in Bethlehem. <laughs> Amen. And so, <clears throat> I want to have a discerning spirit in me. We need a discerning spirit in us. We need an interpretive anointing. And I want to encourage you before we leave here today that you pray a prayer that you ask God, give me a spirit of interpretation. It might flow over into interpreting somebody when they speak in tongues, but it might just interpret, uh, go into interpreting what, what God wants you to do in life. <clears throat> and what, when the pastor's preaching, what is God saying, interpreting that to me? When uh, I hear a song on the radio and my heart is touched, what is God interpreting that to me? What am I supposed to do with that? See? That's the anointing of the wisdom of God. The anointing of the wisdom of God brings an interpretation to things. Hallelujah. So, in the Old Testament, I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to give you a couple little tidbits. But in Genesis chapter 41, um, there's a story of Joseph. I mean, remember the story of Joseph. You know, his brothers threw him into the pit, sold him into slavery. Then he went to Potiphar's house. Then, he, you know, uh, Potiphar's wife wanted to mess around with him and he wouldn't go for it, so they threw him in jail because she lied on him. And anyway, but all, all along the way, well, while he's in jail, while he was in jail, he interpreted two dreams. Two dreams he interpreted. And um, Daniel, if you'll skip down to verse maybe like, oh, let's just look at it. Uh, let me whiz through real quick. Uh, 17, 41, uh, 7, 41, 7. And the seven uh, thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Now, Pharaoh had had the dream. Now, uh, Joseph was in prison, okay, because Potiphar had thrown him there. Pharaoh hears that Joseph has an anointing to interpret dreams. Okay? So he calls for uh, Joseph. Not going. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called all the magicians of Egypt and the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler to Pharaoh saying, I do remember... My faults, go back to that verse. I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put uh, me and a ward in the captains of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. <clears throat> and we dreamed a dream in one night, both of them did. I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, a Hebrew, and that's Joseph, servant of the captain of the guard, and we told him that he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man, according to his dream, did he interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was, me he restored unto my office, and him he hanged. Now you'd have to read the whole story in there, but you know, they both had different dreams, but Joseph interpreted their dreams. One of them ended up being hung, just like Joseph said he would. And the other one got his job back, just like Joseph said he would. All right, let's go on. 
Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph. So Pharaoh was impressed with his interpretive abilities and sent for him. And they brought him in hastily uh, out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came unto the Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it, and I have heard this uh, I have heard say of thee that thou canst uh, understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. In other words, I can't do it of myself. Everybody say that, I can't do it of myself. Amen. And you've got to know that about everything. Amen. The gifts of the Spirit, everything. You can't do any of this of yourself. It is not in me. Okay, now yeah, the greater one lives in us. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about in the self, the self of me, the flesh of me. In me, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. <clears throat> so whatever comes through us is God. If it's if it does any good, it's God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, In my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven kind of... Oh, Battle shed, and oh my goodness, we don't use words like this. And well favored, and they fed in a meadow. This, these are cows, people. They're cows. Okay? And, uh, and behold, why did they just say cow? And behold, seven other kind came up after him, poor and very ill. Favored, and he lean flesh, such as I never saw in all the land of Egypt for bad bottom and badness. And the lean and the ill favored kind did eat up the first seven fat kind. And when they had eaten them up, it could not be known what they had eaten them, but they were still ill-favored as the beginning, so I awoke. And this is... Uh, and I saw in my dream, and behold, seven ears came up, and one stalk full and one good. And behold, seven ears withered thin, and blasted um, with the east wind sprung up after them. And the thin ears devoured the seven good ears, and I told this unto the magicians, but there was none that could declare it to me. And Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. In other words, both of the dreams mean the same thing. The fat cows and the skinny cows, and the ears of corn, one that's skinny and one that's full. And, uh, and the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one, and the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty years lasted with the east. When shall be seven years of famine? This, uh, this is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh, what God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Now we'll stop there. So all of that says one thing. There's going to be seven really bad years. A lot of famine. But before the seven years of famine, there's going to be seven plentiful years. And so during that time, uh, Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of all of Egypt. And Joseph stockpiled all this grain and just saved the land of Egypt. He stayed stopped off for seven years, and when the famine hit, they were ready for it. Yeah. Now, I know this is not the interpretation of tongues, but I'm speaking of a more broader sense of interpretation here for just a minute but to show you that interpretation is not just New Testament, but interpretation is all through the Old Testament. There's another another instance that we could show you of Daniel. I probably I won't do I won't go it. Go there, Daniel. Don't for, just skip over it. But in Daniel, you remember the story where Belshazzar, the king, uh, y'all y'all remember Belshazzar, right? Well, anyway, he so he had taken a bunch of the the, the uh, goblets out of the house of God that was used for the holy temple, and he used it for a wild party he was having. And, you know, they put the wine and all, they ate all the stuff the Jews weren't supposed to eat, so it wasn't sanctified and so forth. And uh, so they're at this party, and up on the wall, a finger appears on the wall. And it writes, Mimi, Mimi, tickle you parson. <laughs> Say it again. Mimi, Mimi, tickle you parson. That's... That's something similar to that in the pronunciation. <laughs> and uh, 
Let's <laughs> well, just look at it. Just look at it. It's not that long exactly, but it's close. Anyway, he, he, could, he did the same thing uh, that Pharaoh did. Called for the magicians, called for all these interpreters and the astrologers and everybody. Come interpret this dream. And they couldn't interpret the dream. So they called Daniel. And it says, Daniel is a man of God, of wisdom, full of the Spirit. And he came. And he interpreted that dream unto the king. And he said, this is what it means. Your kingdom is going to be taken from you and given to another. Because you were like your father who did evil in the sight of the Lord. And you didn't repent. Now judgment is coming on you. And he died that very night. King uh, Belshazzar died that very night. And so, if you get any handwriting on your wall, <laughs> you better start repenting right now. <laughs> Amen. And so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go through this. Daniel, uh, 1 Corinthians 12.30. <clears throat> I'm going to tell you everything in five minutes that I know about interpretation of tongues. Because oh, that's about all, all the uh, take me. Uh, 1 Corinthians 13 30 or 12 30 says, Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Now, this is speaking of the ministry gifts of these different giftings. This is not speaking of a general gift, but the ministry gift, because it's in the list of apostles and stuff, uh, a verse or two before. So, this is speaking of people who have a ministry in these. Do all interpret? No. That don't all people don't all interpret tongues in church. They just don't. Now, could they? Well, they might if they were sensitive and connected. But it doesn't matter as long as somebody interprets it. You're good. First um, Corinthians fourteen five. Fourteen five Daniel. <laughs> I would that you all spake with tongues. But rather that you prophesy. One version says, especially that you prophesy. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh the tongue, except he interpret that the church may receive edifying. Uh, so when someone interprets a tongue, uh, it equals prophecy. It equals prophecy. Uh, and so um, that's why it's so good if there's a, like a public message in tongues. Not just all of us, you know, singing the Spirit together, all of us, you know, praying in, at the same time in the Spirit together. Not, not, not that, but if there's a message given where you can just tell it's a message, yes. and then someone interpret that, then that would equal a prophecy, and then, and then there are several things that it could do. Now let me say something about interpretation of tongues. It's not a translation. It, it, actually, what it means... Some people won't. Oh, I've lost the thing that I wrote about it. Uh, it means to, oh, uh, <coughs> no, I didn't. It means to, in the Greek, it means to open up. You know, if something was a locked box and you opened it up. And you know what? You and me have a lot of locked things in our life and a lot of locked things about our future. But if we will open ourselves up to the interpretations of the Spirit, it'll come, it'll come open. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, where it talked about the different prophets, we just talked about them a minute ago, Daniel and, and uh, uh, Joseph. That interpretation uh, uh, meaning from the Hebrew, uh, pothar, it, it means... Uh, uh, it means a, a similar thing. It means just to open up, to reveal, to unveil, to make known. And so that's what God wants us to do. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, 13. Therefore, let him that speaketh an unknown tongue pray that he might interpret. <coughs> How many of you have uh, operated interpretation of tongues? Sometime in your life. Lift your hand real high. I want to see. I just want to see how many we have in this. About five of you, six of you in this whole room. Now, how many of the rest of you have prayed for interpretation? Okay, there's a whole bunch more that has prayed for. Now, the rest of you need to obey this scripture today. Lord, 
Open up the gift of interpretation to me. Open it up for me. Make me sensitive to the gift of interpretation on all levels of interpretation, including tongues. This past stop. Give me that interpretive anointing. For, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 27, and it talks about uh, when you're in a meeting, if any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and they by course. Now, you know what by course means? Take turns, people. <laughs> Thank goodness we don't have the problem here, but some church, charismatic Pentecostal churches that I've been in, people just try to hog the show. Now, that isn't right. It's not right to hog the show, and it's not right to just sit there and do nothing. Neither one of those is right. What we, did, what we need to do is team. As a team, flow and work in the Spirit. And when we do the teamwork thing, that's when, uh, that's when awesome things happen. Hallelujah. You know, I've, uh, I've spoken in tongues and dreams. I was asleep, spoke in tongues, interpreted it in my dream. Woke up, told Nancy what the interpretation was, and it's just amazing the things that have happened. Just don't limit God. Let Him do some supernatural things among the people. Hallelujah. Let Him do let Him direct you and guide you in really supernatural ways. You know, God directed and guided Nancy and I with a dream. We had a reoccurring dream. I had a reoccurring dream. Five years in a row. Five years in a row, I dreamed a dream. That I, I, and I would wake up. And was in, the, in the fifth time that I had the dream, I sat straight up in bed and I said, this is the year. I had the dream that we were loading our U-Haul truck and driving to Tulsa and going to Raymond. <clears throat> And Oakland Webster were the pastor of this church. Hallelujah. Five years in a row. The fifth year, I sat up and I said, this is the year, Nancy. And just a few months later, we took off. Oakland Webster pastored this church for that year, just like I had in my dream. And what is funny is Sister Carol. Wait your hand, Sister Carol. Sister Carol was on our church board. And I went to the church board and I said, this is what I want to do. I've had a dream. We want to go back to Rama. And Carol said, well, just let me look up. I have this written down somewhere in my prayer journal. Later she found it. And I was presenting it to the board. And now Carol, am I telling the story pretty close to being right? And she had written her prayer journal. Ken and Nancy will return to Rama Bible School and Opal and Webster will pastor while they're gone. Yeah. And she had that five years. Didn't you have that five years before we did it? Five years before when I first had my first dream. But I never told anybody about it. Well, what is that? that see, I flowed in the Spirit, and, and the Spirit was working, speaking to me in the dream. He flowed in the Spirit with Carol. She had interpretation. She had got revealed to her in the Spirit that this was going to occur. And, and you guess how much trouble I had with my church board? Not any. Because they knew that God was speaking. And you know, I just want to encourage you to seek God for supernatural guidance and interpretation in your life, in every area. Whatever it is, jobs, ministry, houses, raises, money. God, you know, God supernatural bring money to you. All kinds of He could just stop limiting God. He is a supernatural God and He just wants to work in your behalf. I just want to encourage every one of you. Stand with me right now. Let's just ask God. Those of you that have not ever prayed that prayer to ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Spirit, I want you to say that ask the Lord to baptize me in the Holy Ghost and give me my tongues. And, give, and while you're at it, I want that interpretation gift too. Father, in the name of Jesus, every one of us that are here just like on the dead of cross, I pray, Father God, that those that are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, that they will receive their prayer language and their prayer tongues. And Father, and we ask you, Lord, not only baptize us in the Holy Ghost and fire, but give us the interpretation gift, an anointing, in Jesus' name, Lord. Give it to us. 
Now, now lift the hand and say, I receive, I receive what, is mine. what is mine. You said I could have it, Lord. And I receive it. Every bit of it. Every all of your gifts. All of your, gifts, all of your, fruit, all of your fruit. Everything that you want to do in me, Lord. I receive. I receive. More of you. More of you. Jesus. I'm going to 